vanguards include civil society and the media. Yes, the media. That's why on press conference, we create the platform for journalists and other actors in the media space to meet, have a conversation, and dissect issues of national interest. Good evening. My name is Duke Menso Poko, and I welcome you to this week's installment of press conference on City TV. Tonight, up for discussion. To build or not to build? To demolish, to demolish or not to demolish the sprawling 5,000 capacity seater National Cathedral that is to uh, begin on land from the Ridge Runabout all the way to the Scholarship Secretariat. This is probably the biggest news in this country for the past six or seven days. And there's been, I mean, various proponents and opponents for this planned construction of a national cathedral. The pros and cons of this project is dissected live tonight on press conference on CTTV. Again, the biggest opposition party in the country, the National Democratic Congress, yesterday went to Congress at the regional level. There have been some fallouts. We'll discuss that on press conference tonight. And looking ahead towards next week, one of the biggest things that will happen is a parliamentary probe by the Finance Committee of Parliament into the circumstances that led to the banking crisis, uh, which has taken over the financial industry, I mean, from August 2017 up until uh, 2018, August, this man who just seen the collapse of some seven banks. But the question is to allow the media to cover or not. That issue is also live on press conference tonight. The show is live and interactive via the WhatsApp line 0549986996. 0549986996. And on Twitter, the hashtag is on press, con is press conference. And on Facebook, City TV GH. We'll take a break and we'll be back to delve into the issues. You're welcome back to press conference and thanks for choosing City TV. Let me straight away go into introducing my guest. To my immediate left is Franklin Bedu Jr. Bedu Jr. is a professional journalist and a student of the law. You're welcome, Franklin. Thank you, Duke. Next to him is Dominic Logi. Dominic Logi is chief editor at the State Broadcaster, that's GBC Radio, and Tema Regional Chairman of the Ghana Journalists Association. You're welcome, Dominic. Thank you, Duke. And to my far left is Kwesi Buafu. Kwesi Buafu is editor at Accra FM. You're welcome, Kwesi. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the press conference. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we would begin with the matter of the National Cathedral. Uh, but before we discuss the issues in the studio, let's take a look at this report. The meeting follows public outrage over government's plans to evict some judges to make way for the construction of a national cathedral. A section of the general public have expressed concerns over the decision to pull down buildings along the Ridge Runabout to the Scholarship Secretariat, the Judicial Training Institute at East Ridge and the Passport Office area for the National Cathedral. However, to the surprise of many, the meeting deferred a decision on the subject and focused on government policies since 2017. The explanation was that the committee set up to oversee the project needed to brief the House on some decisions taken about the project. The President, Nane Kufuado, was however optimistic such gatherings will help government communicate its policies better to the people. And I'm hoping that what we're doing here today is going to be a, reach, a, a regular feature of my government. So something like a couple of times a year we'll have an opportunity to meet and now we'll hear your considerations and you'll also hear the things that are on the hearts and minds of government because it's important that from the different angles from which we approach the public interest we work together. Work together doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything. Work together means that we have an, att an attitude of cooperation an attitude which is that we will, can jaw jaw, we can talk about matters, and we will try and find a way 
that together, collectively, we address the public welfare of our people. Some of the religious leaders who were present at the meeting spoke to journalists and expressed surprise over the criticism of the construction of a national cathedral. The point is sometimes it's better to let the fire calm down before you come out and make certain statements. In the midst of a lot of flames, people saying all kinds of things. Look, if you go to Nigeria, there's a national cathedral. There's a Muslim national cathedral. In a lot of countries, these things are there. Right. So I don't think God is anything strange um, if people decide to come together to aid government in setting up a national cathedral. Remember, we are about 70% Christian anyway. And the Board of Trustees is not silent on we this issue. There are a lot of things, you see, that's what I'm saying. You should allow people to say all that they want to say. Mm. They should vent out their spleen. And then at the end of the day, then you come out when things are calm mm. and say, this is what is going to be done. But in the midst of mm. a discussion, it is absolutely sometimes inappropriate to come out with things and let let people talk a while, and then I believe that the board will come together. <laughs> okay, so that was the, a report on the outcome of a meeting um, between the president and the clergy in the course of the week. Uh, let's get into the issues now. Begin with you, Franklin. There have been calls. I mean, social media was agog over the week with, I mean, people who were essentially saying that country like Ghana with all of its challenges and problems, why should we be demolishing property I mean, such as the I mean, new buildings for appeals court judges and judges of the superior court and other infrastructure to put up a national uh, cathedral? Um, um, thank you, Duke, once again. I think monitoring the controversies and arguments mm. um, being made, um, there seems to be a lot of arguments and debates centering around the relationship between the state and the religious sect of this country. Mm. So people will tend to make the argument that Ghana is a secular state by the constitution. Mm. So the state should not be involved or appear to be involved in any kind of religious activity. We're hearing that it's, 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 the, it's the president's vision and the president's idea. At the end, we are being made to understand that all the Christian groups and associations tend to favor this particular proposal, be it from the president or be it from the associations themselves. But the argument really is we have to demolish it for demolish these structures for a national cathedral. I don't see anything wrong with that. You see, mind you, we've been demolishing structures for a while now to put up certain remarkable structures in this country. The office that houses the Kenyan GJA, a building had to go down for that building to come up. You you mean uh, where the where GJA where the GJA opposite GIJ where yes, the press the press and ties. Where the press and ties. Structures had to go down for that building to come up. You and I know, cantonments, rage, Roman rage, rage everywhere. Buildings have to come down for some buildings to come up. So my point is that if, as a country, we've realized that, not necessarily as a country, let's, as, let's, let's, let's even assume that the proposal did not come from the president and the proposal indeed came from the Christian groups and said, look, this is what we want and this is what we, we are proposing. Can you help us with the land? And government says, look, we can give this particular land. What is wrong with that? The other arguments coming out that we can have some lands outside our crowd. That's just a fair, good argument to yeah, make. Yeah, but nothing the, motorway, has, the motorway has been suggested. Poor have you spoken about mm. Afenia and, and, and others it's have a, also said a brief. Yeah, but why not rage? My question is why not rage? Well, the argument the has been that been made already, the already is the, there's traffic, there's congestion in the city. You imagine the there's a national traffic in mm. the capital. It's about tra a lack of a proper traffic management system. Mm. A cathedral or no cathedral, there will still be traffic. So why are we not tackling the root cause of the congestion and the traffic issues in Accra? Why do we want to solve it from the top? My point is that if the National Cathedral is well planned with a very good uh, financial um, uh, uh, system and structure such that it can make and rake in revenue, why not? People are making the argument that we are not able to maintain some tourist sites in this country. Therefore, it makes no sense to make a tourism argument attached to this cathedral. I disagree. So because one component of our economy doesn't work, doesn't mean we can't look at other avenues of having such structures. Arguments are being made that, for example, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, they built the biggest basilica, I mean, as a proud Catholic, I can yeah. go to that basilica in Yamusuko. So why can't we have that in another city outside? I said, look, during the time of Ufe Buanyin, the kind of politics surrounding that basilica can't be compared to the kind of politics we have now. He wanted to have the biggest Catholic project in the world 
Such as Pope John Paul II who traveled to Cote d'Ivoire. He, he, ended up, he ended up running the country into huge debt after, after the time he left. As we speak, you and, and I still pay that debt. As we speak, you and I know a lot of Ghanaians, mm. Africans, foreigners, foreign leaders who travel to Yamusuku just to visit that cathedral. Is he looking at money? Yes, our uncle David. He traveled there to go and take pictures, didn't he? Yes. He had to pay money. Yes, he had to pay money. So it has become a global edifice such that they are raking in some money. So my point is that if government says or the state says that there is a plan to relocate these court of appeal judges and there will be a plan, a sustainable one of course, to build a permanent structure for them. What is wrong with that? What, which one is the claim one is that it? Christians for five percent in this which, country? Which one is sustainable? The two thousand five hundred dollar mm. rent that is going to be paid per age no, for, 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 for that until, until the, the edifice is completed. There's a cost to every decision we take in this country. Every decision we take in this country is a cost to it. There's no decision we take in this country that comes at an NGO cost. I mean, with no cost. Mm. Every decision we take in this country, there's a cost to it. So, if the, que the question is made, okay, well, government should provide the land. The state shouldn't spend a peso. The state should, I mean, there could be a collaboration between the Christian society and the state. And this has been happening from the 17th century to date. Arguments are being made, as I've read, that, oh, some of the lands procured by the Christian missionaries in the early years were procured through grabbing some slavery and um, new colonial tendencies. They were grabbed illegally or taken unlawfully from the traditional authorities. Question is, post-1957, there have been hundreds of schools, hundreds of hospitals. Are we saying that those lands also grabbed unlawfully? My point is that if those churches are being demolished, see, look, I don't know if you know the area very well. Yeah. Are you aware that there are a lot of idle buildings there? Idle buildings there, like a lot of buildings that were built before 1957 that are rusty. So some of them, I mean, Ridge was, was, well, was largely made up of residences for the colonial. And some of the buildings are such that it poses them. a threat to life and property. But what, what about turning them into architectural pieces? Which are the buildings? I've, I've so, seen all of the buildings. Some of them could some be, of the I mean, buildings, some the buildings I've seen at Ridge so far, mm -hmm. in that enclave for me. There's nothing no can be done about I it. I don't think so. Okay, let, let, me move so. To, let me move to Dominic. Dominic, I mean, that, and, and, and the opposition to this has been, has only... I mean, for me, dangerously took a, a religious turn when we had a group like the Coalition of Muslim Organization groups, Komok, saying that they think that this is an affront to the fact that Ghana is a secular state and government should not be getting involved in this. Is government taking this step too far, Dominic? I don't think so. Mm. Um, to be frank with you, if Ghana were to be some other country mm. uh, and 70% uh, of Ghanaians are Muslim, like Ghana would have been declared an Islamic state. That's, that's, that's what that I think. That is what I think. But for Christians, we are 70% and we've allowed us to have a secular state. And so with that, there is nothing wrong with government and the church or the Christian community deciding that they need to have something that will unite the, the Christian community. As we speak, there is a national mos uh, mosque. Mm -hmm built and i understand the land on which the build the, the mosque is located was given to the muslim community by the fair, fair enough but, those, but, 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 but those were under different circumstances yes, i mean yes. we hear that under the rollings government Rollins, a certain um, mosque was mosque demolished. Was demolished at macoline in, in exchange of that they, were they gave them land. this land at yes Kalkudi. yes and, and so, government specify is not in, in yes this, and this, this building one, this one too we understand government is not going to spend money and it is the church, church. that is going to spend money those of us in christendom those of us who are christians we should be the one complaining because the, our pastors who are leading this will come to us with the offering bowl asking us to support this project we should be complaining and i don't think people extend the argument to the fact that people are hungry in this country there are a lot of poor people in this country nkuma built the motorway when he was doing that people raised questions when Kufo president Kufo wanted to build the flat staff house the jubilee house a lot of questions were raised, but today it is helping us. To me, it is neither here nor there. It is something that we need. We need it even though people will say the timing isn't right, our economy isn't... Duke, Duke you, you are in Parliament, you are a parliamentary correspondent. Yes. When the last budget was read, have you seen any allocation in the budget for this cathedral? No, no, no. I mean, there I is mean, nothing like that. The and so, the issue, the and issue so of government, is saying that, yes. government is saying that they are not going to spend a password, they are not going to spend money on this cathedral. They are just giving the land and giving direction to the because it's the president's vision. The president mm -hmm. came out with it, so they are trying to lead it. If the 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 okay. mosque the national mosque was built 
because so, uh, the former president gave the land and the Muslim community came together to raise funds to build that. It's actually, Why can't, it's actually a Turkish, yes, a Turkish, Turkish uh, yes, organization that's sponsoring it. it. The same thing can be done here where money can be uh, uh, sorted. You can look for money locally and internationally for this to be built. Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, talking about the issue of money, uh, uh, well, uh, even before the project kickstarts, we, we are hearing that a Christian has already donated some $2 million um, to, for, for the start of the project. Um, uh, Kwesi, what, what's your take on this matter? My take is that I don't have a problem with the cathedral. Mm. My problem is about what many people are concerned, the demolition that are going to take place. Mm. And I think maybe we, we spoke to Reverend Oponi Frempon, yes. the former Secretary General, General Secretary of the Christian Council. He said that as, as a group, they are open to an idea of maybe the president promising them another land because we need a cathedral. A cathedral, I think, is a good idea that we want to the, the state want to have it or the Ghana want to have it. But I think the media, in terms of how we are carrying the story, we are not able to distinguish that the, the, the state is not going to build it. How how else how else? I think I think how we should, should we have? How no, else I think we sometimes it, it it's missing that there's the impression that the state is going to build it, but as you, as you are aware, the state is going to facilitate it. And as we know, the land is going to be given by the yeah. state. As the, and and the, the state may issue by Comog. I was very amazed because if you want to raise issue about the state getting involved, the state have been involved in uh, the organization of Hajj, Hajj village, other things. If you want to, the, the account of the Hajj board to be to audited, you should say so. Don't use this one as an excuse. People are doing a lot of things. As you said, the traffic situation. Yeah. We have failed to manage the traffic situation in Accra. We brought a yellow, but now yellow is what? Maybe a glorified throat throat. The impact you're supposed to have in terms of reducing traffic to the central businesses like that has failed to do so. They are now computer trotters. So the argument about tra traffic and all those things, I find it very, very weird. Because I think the, the problem that I have is about demolishing structures, those uh, the, the, the College of Surgeons and Physicians, and the, no, the no, judges no, no, are the passport office and all the judicial training school and those, those, those that yes. are my this is my basic problem. But as for those arguments about the state involved in those kind of issues, if people want to raise issue about how, how hard board has managed these affairs, they should be bold and say that the government should audit the hard board. Don't use this cathedral as an excuse that the state is getting involved. So, so for you, that's 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 a non-starter at all. Even appointed a hard board, the vice president and the president have been giving money. They have been going there. The government have been subsidizing this hard for by years. Not now. In other countries, they mean the state have stopped. India, they have stopped sponsoring her. They say they can use that money. Even to Nigeria, where there. the president is now. So, is, so, so is but those arguments are there. But people are trying to raise a lot of issues to muddy the waters and those kind of issues. So I think maybe, as uh, Reverend Pulit from said, they are, they, are, they are amenable to the idea of maybe giving another land. But maybe you should be in Accra. Maybe they want in a certain location so that there they, 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 uh, they are certain key uh, edifices there. Maybe the international conference center, the yeah, sports stadium, yes, the, the state yeah. house, parliament, and all this kind. So, but maybe they can give, they, they can be given a new land. Wait, where my question is that, where is the land? Someone is saying, where is the land? In the no, state have a lot of land. Land. Like, where? Where? The, the state. So where? That's my question. Where? Maybe they have because to say that. People are suggesting the land motor. Franklin, motor. Franklin, motor. Another yeah. problem yeah. is that maybe the, the members, the cadre members, the members, the suggesting yeah. I've got before coming information because I agree and a feeling. So they can give the suggestions of. I can't say, uh, <laughs> a Prague, a Brie, a Cropon. Those suggestions are really fine for me. But my question is that you listed the passport office. You yeah. mean the passport office at Rich? I didn't look like a strong building to you. <laughs> the day I went to renew my passport, I was in a haste to leave the place. Because you and I know that building is very rich. And those kinds of buildings are in the majority in that enclave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the of issue of demolition, look, we are demolition structures for malls, we are demolition structures for embassies. We are demolishing structures for clubs. Yeah. We are demolishing so many on state lands. So what is wrong? You see, this seventy percent has been there since I was born. I think we need to review it and go for a better research. It may be more than seventy percent, and we need to understand the relationship between the state and the religious yes. sect. See, I'm telling you again, that no again, 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 he less and priest will be asking for the national association of shrine something 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 and you want a form a last a national shrine so bring a proposal after all the cost is about 10 percent or less than 10 percent so bring a proposal government to look at it the merit and the merit and see how they support in fact for the years now government has been supporting traditional authorities traditional rituals all forms of traditional worship government has been supporting over the years who has been complaining? 
So called the consensus around the table is that this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but be, my problem is that the trustees they have not been forthcoming information. So the trustees should they be much more the, they 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 the public. Because people are even concerned about how people are going to donate in terms of you might not know who is going to donate. People may be laundered money on those guys, so they should be clear in terms of how they want to go up at it. And if you read them, I spoke to uh, Reverend Kusi, uh, Kusi, uh, Victor Kusi, Victor, Victor Kusi. Victor Kusi. He said I'm going to have a press conference on Friday. That's I spoke on Wednesday, but. It didn't yeah. happen. So I think they should come out. They should be forthcoming information that people will know because a lot of things are being thrown out there which are not part of it. So but, they need but, to but clear the, the air. The issue too is that this is what something that is developing is in a process. Yeah. It's not that they firm up a lot of things for them. Oh, to but, but so it, 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 it started I mean, twenty it, plus. Yeah, so, it, so we look at the project like this and as of now, with all the controversies generated, we, where we don't even know of the cost. That's a, that's the another cost challenge. Is not out yeah. there. So the yeah, cost so? with respect to who? The Christians or no, the, the cost of the, the cost of the project. Yeah, yeah, they they don't do come to churches. I mean they don't do no, 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 with time, I expect them to come out with information. There's no yes, way that the will be built and we don't know how much a cathedral costs. Well, what if? I mean, if and what if they take the position that this is a Christian thing? We are funding the so I'm saying, the public so information no, about how much is going to cost. Yeah, 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 public yeah, issue. Yeah, 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 and a religious sect that become or that becomes an issue of public interest. So once anything you do in this country, even as a private citizen, once the issue or the project or the plan you have its implementation. Has large public interest. There's certain there's certain information that we need as a matter of right to know. So we need to know the cost of the project, who is donating, how you donate. It's very important. All right. Thank you, Franklin Bedu Jr. <laughs> and 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 we would I mean put a break onto the, that topic for now because obviously the issue is developing as the consensus has been reached and it's bringing up a lot of a, a, a lot of I mean emotions and generation a lot of engagement and interest from. From, from from our viewers. And this one from Nana Bwaji in Takra, says the cathedral is needed, but Accra is already congested. So do we still want it to be built there? I'm watching from Takra there. Emmanuel Yamche says there will always be one need or the other. God's house must and will be built. This one from Thomas Edu says, we need it and want it, period. Nana Uyafi Mano says, we need it and we will build it. Some of us are prepared to contribute. And this one, from Thomas Edu says, I am very ready to contribute. So the consensus around the table, and indeed from what is coming in here, is that the larger majority of Ghanaians won this national category. I don't know what you think. You can join us with your comments. But now, though, let's do some NDC politics. That party is in the process of restructuring and revitalizing ahead of the 2020 elections already. Close to 12 candidates, or let me say 11 candidates, have declared their interest in wanting to fly aloft the flag of the NDC ahead of the 2020 elections. But this weekend, the party went to the polls to elect regional executives as the step that, was, that is being taken before they go into the national executive elections and then ultimately the flag bearer elections in December 2020. We'll take a look at some of the reports on the grounds uh, in the greater Accra region and in the central region. We're we'll back to dissect the fallouts from the NDC regional congresses. This is press conference. After over six hours of steady voting, it was now time to count the ballots to find out the victors who will lead the regional NDC for the next four years. Representatives of aspirants watched the ballot sheets with eagle eyes as they were counted. Amidst the euphoria in the crowd, Chairman Kobna Adekoka was announced as retaining his post for the third time with 319 votes out of the total 1,004 votes cast. He addressed the party after the win. Positive. That the kind of election the NDC have spoken, the kind of new people who have come on board will enrich the fortunes of the party in the coming years. I pledge that I have worked very well in training with all the members who have been elected. I believe we can all work with one common purpose and the purpose of bringing the NDC back to power 
in the year 2020. Another victor of the night, former MP for Ablekuma Central Theophilus Tetechai, also emerged as secretary by a landslide victory. He managed to acquire for himself 561 votes, beating the four others who were in the race with him. He expressed his joy to City News. I can't even describe the feeling. In fact, before I came to parliament, I was at an executive position. So this is something which is not new. But you know, parliament is different from party work. And to be able to do party work and then enter into parliament, with all the experience, for me, I thought the best thing for me to do for my party, in terms of the investment that the party has given me, is to also serve the party at those stretches. Well, so the newly elected executives to man the affairs of the Greater Abgar Regional Chapter of the NDC have promised to contribute their quota towards recapturing power come 2020. Reporting for City News from the Central Cafeteria here at the University of Ghana, my name is Nihama Ama. The election grounds was covered with posters of aspirants and a lot of delegates clad in the NDC party colors. There also was heavy security presence. Many were busy campaigning for their respective aspirants. The event began at about 11 a.m. with the usual party chants and songs. The time is currently 2.15 here at the Coalition Centre and as you can see behind me, the elections has commenced. Um, a few moments ago, the announcer was mentioning the names of delegates according to their um, constituencies. We're hoping to see how things turn out. Some party stalwarts and delegates share their thoughts on the entire event. It's, it's going normal, but it should have started earlier. But as it is, the electoral commission uh, officer to hasten the process so that people will vote early. The, the elections are going very well. I think uh, you are the media, you are here. You've seen that people have behaved themselves reasonably well. Um, the candidates have been given a chance to address the delegates. Each of them has expressed themselves. And the delegates, I believe, have already had an opportunity to interact and interface with the delegates in their constituencies. The aspirants who spoke to us were very positive about the outcome of the elections. So the incumbent regional communications officer for Central Region and also going again and by the grace of God I'm number two on the ballot paper signifying second term. I just uh, had the opportunity to cast my votes. Some of us are in for the change that we are looking for so that we will be able to meet the MPP boot for boot for 2020. I know the elections has gone on very well and I'm expecting a win, nothing else. At about 10 p.m., the election results were announced and the winners officially sworn in. For the ultimate, Kakrayali, 256. YKT Ado, 299. Akwena Pansa, 157. We get the two, between 740. So YKT Dunko has been elected. The newly elected chairman shared his vision for the party in the region. It is our determination with my strong team to elevate this party from defeat to victory and from victory unto victory. And I pray that all those contestants who were not successful in the election will come together with me and see how best we shall elevate the region to victory. After hours of campaigning and voting euphoria, it all has finally come to an end with the declaration of the results. Reporting for City News here at the Central Regional NDC Election Grounds, my name is Michael Obuju. So we saw Greater Accra and central region michael Obudu, with that report just to run by you the people who won especially for the chairmanship position joseph kobna ni adekoka shrug of competition from gilbert amati mensa and emmanuel ni ashimo former dental mp2 uh, with the greater accra seat ekt Ado, central region he won Beat uh, competition from Aquinas State Aquinas former MP4 and fancy man Nana Toku. Uh, surprisingly, he beat the incumbent Big Edu. Big Edu Nana Toku 
collapsed the last four, uh, four years ago when he lost that election to Big Edu, but he came back and was able to take that position back. Uh, another shock also in the eastern region, incumbent um, Kerry Abuating lost to John Ousu Amankra, popularly called Joak. And um, Ashanti region, hmm, Joseph Yamin, uh, former minister in the Mahama administration, lost to uh, Nana Akwesi. Um, and then also in Bruno Afu, that was a no contest, was unopposed. Ambassador Kojunya Mitchell Mafu, himself former minister, former ambassador to Algeria, won. And then interesting battleground, voter region, Jifa Aku Ativo. Probably there were signs on, on Friday when uh, her boy, Egypt Kudoto, lost the uh, youth organizer elections. Um, she couldn't shrug off competition from incumbent Kojo Japon, and uh, Chairman Kojo Japon won again. Kujo, Japan, I should say. Ibrahim Mobila, Northern Region. Abdul Nasser, Upper West Region. Gentlemen, surprises? Which of them, I mean, was was more surprising? Any Anything uh, to pick from these NDC regional see, elections? In 2008, when mm. MPP lost the election, mm. you could feel the anger within the party and the delegates. So at their next national, regional, and constituency election, you could see a rapid change from the national level to the constituency level. Mm. Learning from that, I'd assumed that um, looking at the fatal loss of the NDC, I mean, cut of almost a million votes, unprecedented, which not happened before. Mm. It's never happened in our history before. I thought the party members or delegates uh, would show some form of anger at their poor performance during the last election and change a lot of their leaders. But it appears that a lot of the executives on the regional level having been, uh, been maintained probably some of them felt i mean they, they could read me between the lines so some of them even decided not to contest the likes of alote jacobs the like of steve obin pair in ashanti region yes but you're also uh, looking at other people in the, the organizers the youth organizers mm. some of them um went in for other positions other than the original positions they had been in over the last four years mm. so i think largely i think about 60 percent i'm still yet to be done the analysis but i think about 16 percent have been maintained they've not been changed mm. And are we to suggest that the party uh, members are, are satisfied with the performance of a lot of the uh, previous executives who led the party to, uh, to this massive, unprecedented no. defeat? I thought there could have been, I was expecting a lot of sweeping changes. A massive overhaul of uh, over the system just to send a message that, look, you underperformed, you didn't like you, I want you to perform. Just like what happened to John Boydou and the rest at 2008. They took all them out. They came back, revitalized, they came back, they won, and they are, they are in power now. So I don't feel the anger in. Greater Accra, for example, I'm actually surprised at the hooker won. You thought he was going to lose? I yeah. thought he's, he's been there for, on two occasions. I've not seen any sterling, unique leadership qualities that the hooker has shown in the region, honestly. It's been one actually division from... More seats, actually. Yes, they're losing more seats. It's actually one division from one constituency to the other. And they are, the MPs in Greater Accra region, it's so visible. There are some MPs support... And the cooker, there are some who don't support Ade Kuka. It will translate into the parliamentary primaries where Ade Kuka possibly will appear to be supporting some, some candidates. candidates against the incumbent. So you can imagine the conflicts, the potential conflicts ahead. Mm. To me, and for me, I'd have loved, not loved, loved, but I thought that Amati Mesa deserved a chance um, to sell the party at the regional level to the chairman. I mean, as MC for the Jokuku, one or two assignments, I went to a constituency, spoke to him and all that. I feel he's a ground person and he's a people's person and he would have been able to mobilize but you see, a lot of the grass. The, frankly, the, the, the point that others also make was that, I mean, they were not strategic. If you look at the kind of support that um, Amati enjoys, it's the same support that Ashimo enjoys. Mm -hmm. So that whole sector should have come together, strategically put up one person so that solid, they can solidify their support and go and face Chairman Andy. I agree. But Ashimon's popularity within the region, if you ask me, compared mm -hmm. to Dan Amate Mensa, I, I would have chosen Dan Amate Mensa over him. And the vote difference between Adekoka and Amate Mensa, I think it's less than 50. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's less than 50 votes. So yeah. it was quite close between the two. So I expected Amate to have won, but he lost. Hey, um, I was surprised Big Yudu in Western region also lost the election because <laughs> Big Yudu, for me, as far as I'm concerned, has resources. But um, at the last election, he was not seen largely on the ground. People didn't see him as a, a grounds chairman who could move with them. I mean, when Eben and I traveled um, across the Western region for the station, we, could, we couldn't feel the presence of the regional chairman in the region. No. For Central Region, 
it was good and Ruti Jacobs didn't make it. Why? 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 Had, I mean, it, it was very unpopular? Uh, uh, very, very unpopular after the election. But before the election, there were a lot of accusations against him that I was holding campaign material. Allegedly holding campaign material and resources. And when we traveled across all, almost all the constituencies, you could feel that perception, allegedly. I mean, I, I mean, across all the constituencies, and there was this mistrust between you and Adeku as a person and the party people. And Ike Siadu, former regional minister, he has some experience, so I think he will do better in that capacity. Um, uh, Voter region, I, I, I think it's good that she didn't win for herself in the party. Why? She, Why? For me, her reputation has been bruised. And after this whole bars brand saga, you see, it may not have gone to a court of competent jurisdiction to be found guilty. And a court of public but opinion. But the public, public opinion and perception alone weighs heavily against you. And I'm actually surprised that Mr. Japan, Japan won mm -hmm. as voter regional um, chairman because the NPP, possibly for the first time, had made a lot of um, inroads in the particular region. Well, and he has and issues. People, he was before the election, so he was accused of dividing the party and all of exactly. that. Exactly. So, me, that. to conclude, before my colleagues come in, the party reserving or retaining a lot of their former executives for me it doesn't it, it's two things either they feel that the problem wasn't the executives which i'm sure will count to <laughs> it was something else other than the executives oh but if, if that if that is anything to go by exactly. then you could also predict that then the general who took them to battle yeah. will come back again that possibly they the trust general so they, so they trust that possibly <laughs> the original executives largely cannot be blamed for their loss that someone else or some group of people can be blamed for Before their the resources because the anger that we saw in 2008 yes. in MPP was clear that they were dissatisfied at the level of performance by their executives at all levels and they killed largely everyone out. No, that's why I don't feel this anger within the NDC. NDC. One million votes, there's no anger. So possibly in their minds, they, they, they can't blame or they wouldn't want to blame these current executives largely, but they may want to blame someone else or a group of people for their electoral defeat. Dominic. Uh, is, this, is this predicting anything about the flag bearers? I mean, yeah, yeah, you can see the signs mm -hmm. on the wall that a lot of the uh, incumbent chairmen uh, have won, and uh, they are leader in the main election is also contesting, and so you can. I don't think, I don't think it's right to say a lot of the incumbent no, chairmen. Have no, won. No, no, not most of them. Did most not of them did not. Did not run Some did election. not. Okay, so but the executive, the executive, the executive, the executive, 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 executive yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, when you see. You see that they've retained their seats, and I'm sure it's a sign that something will happen when we come to the flag bearership race. Too, um, I'm equally surprised that Adikoka won the Greater Accra Chairman because you see that unpopular. I, I, you know, the way MPP won the elections in Greater Accra, I was suspecting that. The delegates, I mean the seats, the seats, I mean the seats, the parliamentary seats, and even going into 2020 election. I've done some analysis when you look at it. If NDC doesn't do its homework, lose more seats, it will lose more seats. Like, yes, seats like Sege is there. What is happening is Sege, the margin that the keeps dropping, the guy, the Christian quality, use to win that election is minimal. minimal. When you come to the Amasaman area or Boom area, those mm. areas, the guy there is also struggling. And so other areas as well. And when you study the Greater Accra election, parliamentary election very carefully, if a party wins the main election, when they go for the second so round, weather. they add up to it. Yeah. So Greater Accra has been like that. Mm. So if they, if they don't take time, that's why I'm a little surprised that Adekuka has been retained because he didn't do that well being the main person in the region to galvanize the people to get a vote for the NDC. Go to the Volta region. At Japan, there were a lot of apathy in the Volta region during the last elections. And so I didn't see him winning. Him winning. And so maybe if he's gone back to convince the people that he is going to change to do more for the party to win in the region. One thing that I was expecting is that I thought we could have a woman been one of the chairmen. You were disappointed. And then I've been disappointed. <laughs> I thought maybe because based on what I've heard that Jifa Chief Ativo has done in the Volta region, I was thinking she was going to win. But when Egypt lost, uh -huh. and it don't know me that there's some sign there. Yeah. So 
largely, uh, I'm surprised at some of the, the, the wins, but hey, it's a sign that the flag brushship race is going to be something we have to be uh, watchful. Okay, Kwesi. Uh, I was surprised Jamin lost because the way he was running with Masibros <laughs> and even entering the election hall yeah, with the yeah, hops, with, with, with with Abid, yeah. I mean, so far, probably that should be the speech of the general secretary. Uh, that, sh that should probably be the blot of, of violence or some yeah, force. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, it has been largely, mm. largely uh, peaceful. Mm. Nothing has been except that I think some delegates were also involved in an accident Eastern going to yeah, the region. region. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what is surprising about, about Yamin's loss? I, I think maybe he was very confident of winning. I've, 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 mm. I spoke to my reporter in Ashanti region, and Yamin was all over the place. And being a former minister, so former deputy regional minister, he thought he, he could, could make uh, the seat and his own. But uh, I was surprised he lost. Maybe the incident may, might have also affected his image in the, in the eyes of the delegate. But uh, one thing I was surprised also about the, the loss of Big Edu, as he said, Nana Toku. The last time lost out and collapsed, but this time still they come back to win the seat. We gave us to say he had the resources, but mm -hmm. we also have to say that no, he was not on the ground space in terms of reaching out mm -hmm. to the people. Then somebody like uh, Alotje Jacobs did not contest at all. So I thought maybe Akwana Steve Akwansa, being a former regional minister, thought that he could use he could use his leverage in the region to win the seat. But Ikechi Adu, as a veteran, showing that yeah, he has what it takes. And in central Alotje has been. Not in good terms with the party leadership in terms of criticizing them a lot on on air. Oh, he has a problem with the with his own executive. Yeah, and even the national executives, oh, okay. ambassador for who holding fans and other things. So I think he the, the region, the central region is up for grabs. You know, central region, the, the coastal areas, the NDC, that's, that's very well there. But when the MPP came in, they are seen like the Kufu and the Asin areas. Then people always win those seats. But their problem is the coastal area. So I think that's where the uh, fishing issues and other issues came on. So I'll tell you, maybe thought it twice that if you are gone, you have lost Mr. so you stay back and allow a, a shatter. That's Aquina Stevia Kwanza to go back. He's also lost out to the veteran. So maybe there are not many surprises. We don't have a region, a former, former ambassador. And, 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 he, and he is someone who knows the region very well. And I think he, he, he told that, that that's why he went on the post. Nobody contested him for this. Because he was being DC, he was regional, yeah, regional, regional, regional minister. minister and and so I don't know how this election, in terms of the executive, is going to impact on the presidential primary. Because already I've, I've seen a report by the former president that he's going around to speak to them. He has spoken to all the term regional chairmen and maybe he's going to run to speak there to them. There was one of the congresses, the Northern Regional Congress. His, his picture was large oh, and bold yeah. at the <laughs> at the Ali Mama Stadium, I see he was the one who was supporting the. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want, if you are looking for a fair race, I thought that was a bit you know, overboard. And he's released a, a, a statement that a he's, statement going to, he's, he's going to, to, all all to all of them. He's going to meet he not the winners and the. I don't think he should be involved. Why? 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 while they vote it's fine and cool yeah, if you are saying that was. after the election mm -hmm. you are going to be mending and patching the various but the other candidate has always taken to the party what prevents them i'm saying that things you can do at the background that they are all doing at the background even though constitution is not the leader of the party it's the de facto leader of the party who speaks in de facto there's a party structure it looks like uh john mohammed's involvement in the patching up or the healing process is, is a source of some division here on, on on the panel but that's a good time to take a break we'll be right back after this short break this press conference don't go away up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Because we're given only those in their third trimester. So in the next three months, those in their second would be ready for to receive the kit. And we're taking data at registration, which is before they take the kit, at delivery and post-delivery, so that we can analyze. And we'll see the numbers. So from the numbers and the data, that we're collecting, we would know what has worked, what hasn't worked, you know. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for breakfast. 
daily, only on City TV. Hey, welcome back to press conference on City TV. My name is Duke Mentobuk. Before we went on that break, we were discussing the fallouts from the NDC regional congresses. Uh, let me take a couple of messages. Kingsley Wilson says, Fear delegates, interesting times ahead. Slita Said says, City, you are uh, the best. And um, Joseph Dabo. Um, says that uh, there are much more. You guys sit on this huge platform and you are discussing national cathedral and um, and NDC politics. There are issues much more pressing that you should discuss. Well, that's what you think. I will take it into consideration some of these uh, concerns. Now let's move to our last issue on, on the table for that section today, and that has got to do with uh, the impending probe by Parliament's Finance Committee into the um, banking sector crisis, the collapse of the seven banks. I caught up with the Finance Committee chairman on Thursday after the Finance Committee had uh, concluded a meeting uh, setting out the modalities for that probe, which will begin on um, Wednesday, coming Wednesday. Uh, he had some thoughts to share about the rising concerns from the public as to why the probe would not be public. We met, I think, two weeks ago. We decided to write to a number of institutions, uh, particularly the Bank of Ghana. So we asked the Bank of Ghana to produce documents that, in their estimation, uh, are related to what has happened uh, with these banks. So the Bank of Ghana has obliged, and today they've supplied a number of documents. They, it came in, so we've made copies for our members. and. They brought us about six uh, summaries of the Bodes report that on the Unibank, um, some speeches delivered by the governor and others. So the Bank of Ghana has supplied documents, but we have also invited um, the receivers, PricewaterhouseCoopers and KPMG, to appear before the committee. The Ministry of Finance itself has also been invited. You're, you know, the Minister of Finance capitalized the new consolidated bank, also issued bonds totaling about eight billion. Uh, so then we've also invited a new consolidated bank, Ghana Limited. And to a lesser extent, maybe uh, Securities and Exchange Commission and also the National Insurance Commission. I think some of these holding companies of these banks uh, deal in all of these areas, insurance, pensions, um, asset management, and also will briefly. So this will start on Wednesday, the 5th, as agreed. We'll have the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance take their turns on Wednesday, the 5th. And then on Thursday, the 6th, we would have PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, and also the new Consolidated Bank. Mm. The, I don't see why we are so much fixated about this public hearing, camera hearing. We are more or less a fact-finding committee. Uh, after the facts, after all that has occurred, we invite people to apprise ourselves of the happenings. Mind you, we are not an investigative body. That would be Yoko, the CID, the police, and the, neither are we a prosecutorial body like the special prosecutor, uh, the court, uh, if you like. So they are handling other aspects of the matter, be it investigations and prosecutions. Now, we, uh, some matters are already in court, as you, you might know. So that's the economist who heads the Finance Committee of Parliament, Member of Parliament for New Jobbing South, Dr. Mark S.B. Yabua. Franklin, his reason is tenable. D not at all. This is heartbreaking. This is rather unfortunate. And this is the most empty excuse I've ever heard of a parliamentarian. Let's talk of a chairman of a finance committee. And I don't and think... The fact that banking deals with I, banking deals with reputation I, and trust. So some of the these more reason issues why should not be your public. investigations should be public. So we know what exactly... See, I've been saying this, and I've also been saying this, that if Ghanaians understood this banking crisis, 
the way we understood the Woyome issue when you went for uh, all our political research, is everyone saying uh, uh, Woyome at all levels, Woyome, Woyome. If you understood the banking crisis and if you understood the implications of the national economy on you, your children and your grandchildren, I don't think you're saying what you're saying. Look, in the US, what's the worst fago? Was Fago is a case I feel is a lot Even was Fago, there was a whole congressional hearing where senior members of Congress sat to question executive of Was Fago and we were trying to compel the CEO and the chairman to resign. Was Fago, I'm referring to Citigroup or Citibank, Was Fago. How much more in Ghana, where about five banks have been consolidated, about six banks have, been, have collapsed, there's a banking crisis. We are going to go for a loan of about 10 billion Ghana cities at the cost of the taxpayer. It appears that people have acted in a way that showed collusion to commit fraud and have stolen. And you are telling me as an institution of state, as critical as parliament, they are going to have an indoor meeting and at the point you say that they are not going to, they are not an investigative body, but they will embark on a fact-finding mission. To do what? And this is what makes parliament sometimes look like a like a, a white elephant institution where they can't bite. If parliament can't bite, then who buys for us? If parliament can't bite, look and who buys for us? So if a whole institution of parliament, a institution in the house of parliament, a unit, a committee like finance committee, can't call these people to order. Then look, who, who? Well, well, the remedial who measure speak for us. The, re, the remedial measure is, is that there's going to be a briefing before and then after the after the. You hearing. see their posture and their reaction alone. That's not reflect their seriousness about the issue. It is as if we are talking about thousand Ghana CD missing mm. or two thousand Ghana CD being mismanaged. That reflects almost, uh, I mean, ten billion Ghana CD cost to the taxpayer. And I tell you, they are going to have an in-camera hearing to achieve what purpose? Okay, um, uh, Dominic, you've you've reported from Parliament for 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 for, for a very long time, I and mean, yeah. you were in Parliament as parliamentary yeah. correspondent. How does this sit with you? I mean, Finance Committee, we know, it's one of the iron ketting committees you see it's one of the committees very difficult for you to get schools from yes. as a journalist yes. finance committee mines and energy committee very difficult for par for parliamentary correspondents to get and so is are they not staying true to character to say that they are not opening up this banking sector all the issues are different it is their character as mm. you know that is how sometimes they operate they try to use legal terms parliamentary terms to tell you Oh, this is what, how we do it. This is how it's done. We decide. Par Parliament is a, a law on its own. They do whatever they want to do. Nobody can question them. That is what they do. Sometimes you report in Parliament and you, you get frustrated mm -hmm. getting stories, getting scoops, getting information to publish. And so what he's saying is something mm -hmm. that Ghanaians will not accept. We are not angry enough. We as a Ghanaian, this is a public, the banks are public institutions. They've gone down with people's money. People are angry. People, people are bitter. Have lost people have lost their jobs. Even as people, 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 some people are people dead. Have been sent home. I think DKM and so, Goris Lafra yes. has received more DKM and Goris Lafra. Yes, so let's say that they are going to do the investigation, not even investigation, fact finding. After that, what what will be the outcome? What will be the result? What will they use it? Obviously, there will be recommendations. It will help the bodies that are mandated by the government. But don't forget that Parliament is. Is that, I mean the people's yes. representative has, has they yes. always they that always is why the people need to 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 listen to, to the what people. is going on. Yes. So it's unacceptable that it the is, media will not be allowed to cover. It's not public. Yet. You can, even after that, you know, Parliament should have done something earlier when the UT Bank and uh, Capital Bank collapsed. They didn't. They didn't do anything. They sat there already. A member of the committee, uh, Adongo, has been rubbishing the work of the uh, Bank of Ghana, accusing them, even criticizing the report. That have been used by Bank of Ghana. So why is the committee going they, to they do? They routine, routinely, they meet the Bank of Ghana. Well, what what, what are they going to do? Because you see, as we said, we are using state money to 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 to, to save the banks or to consolidate banks. And you are saying we are not going to allow this. Where ordinary people are going to hear for the first time some of the issues that led to the collapse of these banks, and you are banning the media from covering it. Apart from you see, it tells you that the, the parliament, this parliament or parliament, is the weakest link in our government system. Because of the, so many powers they have, they have not doing anything. And have you even seen parliament doing any investigation or doing any investigation and come out a, a tangible report that have impacted on society? 
no, I, I don't think I don't think they, they, they are, I, think, I don't think they are up and doing in terms of this. I think I think it just shows the posture they have they have, they have, they have, they have taken shows that nothing good is going to come out of this report or this work they are going to do. I think it's a sad day because you say you are not going to allow the media. Even some of your members have been rubbishing the work of the central bank. So I don't think we should expect anything much better from Bank of Ghana. So uh, the parliamentary so the fact fine. Fine. when they finish and they come out with the facts, they'll create an album and put it on the shelf of parliament or what? Or they'll go to the committee of the whole and pass it or adopt the report or what? The, the speaker will direct the report to be referred then what to will the, happen? The, the Then what will happen? What will, what will happen? They should stop. That's they what they do. No, they, that's they, what they do. When issues come and they want to be heard, that's what they do. When this no best in your king. And God is love. You were in parliament. I was in parliament. It's, it is because of that. Because yeah. of that, that we, have the, yeah. we have the small deposit uh, deposit uh, yeah. taking um, act. act yeah. yeah, the small. Is that because of DKM and God is Yes, it's because of those two the, the, those issues that we have. And commercial have banks that, which have, have which, has, which has actually widened the powers yeah. that 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 the bank of Ghana has. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And using act in and this about instance. five banks have collapsed, mm -hmm. and you are telling me that the whole parliament of Ghana, two hundred seventy-five MPs, they are telling us that they go and have an in-house caucus meeting and interview actors in this whole mess and say what and create an album that we should read the facts <laughs> and do what and what will happen i think for now our constitution should be at yoko and, and uh, uh, bank, of ghana, bank of ghana also um, internal investigations as well at the end i think mean, like yoko and the attorney general's department will have when it comes that. to criminal prosecution that's what i'm looking at yeah. and do information is so I don't know why we make information so scanty and so difficult to come by in this in this country. Such a huge crisis that's never happened in our history before. You literally have to cry and beg for information. Mm -hmm. And look, if the, the state fails to prosecute the actors in this particular mess, they'll be set they'll be setting up a huge unfortunate precedent mm -hmm. that will lead this country into total irreparable chaos. But but, but, but the thing is that some of the banks also claim that the state owes them. The state and so the 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 if you read the paper, even if you look at that, the banks would have to have the state owe you compel you to break some forest rules or some rules in this country. It's part of the things As the things stand now, most of these matters, even the borders report that came out, there are portions of it that are not it's, it's, uh, there are portions of it that came out. The whole report didn't come out. Yes. And you know that, I mean, as a budding lawyer, you know that if you read it. Budding lawyer, Paul. You know that if you read a, a, a document in part and you read yes. it in, mm -hmm. in whole, the appreciation is different. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's even the more reason why this probe should be open to the public. Yes. So that we get to appreciate the issues in fuller perspective. I mean, for, 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 for the benefit of everybody. This would have been the, I mean, the subject the of. Yet. A huge parliamentary hearing in the US or even the UK. Look at this Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, yeah. The whole uh, CEO. They are saying uh, just Congress. United Nations, World Bank, IMF, everybody should be involved. And since <laughs> the last, since more than 10,000 people are going to stay oh, right. More than 10,000 people are going to be affected directly and indirectly as a result of the collapse created by some rubber barons. Thank you very much, Franklin Bedou Jr. Thank you, um, Dominic Law, G, uh, GBC, uh, senior editor for GBC Radio. And chief uh, chief editor, yes, for GBC Radio, and editor for Accra FM, Chrissy Deborah Franklin Bedu Jr. is a professional journalist yeah, and a student. The <laughs> <laughs> law. My name is Duke Metso. That's how we draw down the curtains on this week's edition of press conferences on every Sunday evening at 9 p.m. Good night. Good times on City TV. Welcome to Saturday Live. My name is Kojo.